Hi, Pottery Peeps. Long time no see. Uh, first, apologize for not putting up a video for the last two weeks. This um, last knee surgery has kicked my butt. <laughs> um, in fact, my doctor gave me a long lecture about lowering my expectations that I am not going to be in the studio as fast as I thought. Three surgeries in nine months um, uh, made this one really tough. And I actually have to go in for another procedure this week where they're going to crack me. Doesn't that sound lovely? Um, my knee that was done in October has not gotten the physical therapy um, attention that it needed because of the other surgery that had to happen. First of all, the other knee was compromised, couldn't do a lot of the things required um, in physical therapy, and then the surgery, no physical therapy, and then physical therapy. It's not bending, basically. Um, as much, um, I was told that if I was in my 70s, they wouldn't even do this. But because I'm in my 50s and I'm very active and I want to eventually be able to climb out of a kayak, that is the goal, um, they're going to crack the knee. They're going to put me under and basically bend it like a chicken bone. <laughs> ah! I just break out in a cold sweat every time I think about it. Anyway, so that's happening this week. So um, getting um, videos done has um, been really tough. Getting into the studio, um, I can't really stand um, and work out there for longer than 30 minutes without everything locking up. And those of you who have had this surgery, sitting is actually the worst. So sitting doesn't work either and kicking on the wheel doesn't work either. So I do apologize for that. We'll hopefully get over this and by spring have a schedule where we're doing one a week or more a week. It'd be fun. So what I'm doing today, what I've been trying to do for the last two weeks, um, is glaze these urns. Um, <clears throat> so a lot of you have reached out and want to see how I'm going to glaze them. So you've never done a glazing video before. You are actually inside my kitchen. Yes, I glaze in my kitchen. I don't cook in my kitchen anymore. That's long past. I cook in a kiln. I don't bother cooking anymore. We, my husband and I, kids are gone and raised. We fend for ourselves pretty much all the time. And um, it works. So, hey, don't break it if it works, right? Don't knock it. And if you hear any, um, if you hear the noise in the background, let me just take, take you to Rinka. Rinka, there, you're making a lot of noise. I can hear you. Yes, this is my husky Rinka. She's a husky Malamute. Beautiful dog. Stubborn dog, um, very vocal dog, absolutely love her. Um, she is nine, nine, oof. Anyway, okay, let's get on to the glazing. So this is the companion piece to the tree of urn that I made. It has a lot of the same elements that the big one does. This is going to be for Wendy's daughter. And we're gonna glaze this. She wanted uh, lavender mist, and then we're gonna do the holly green that I'm gonna do from Spectrum in this other one. So what I'm going to do first is glaze the inside. Okay, so this is my clear that I mix up myself. And um, John Britt, this is his tip with the um, um, toilet board brush. Um, and I got them like at the dollar store and a lot of my big buckets have the toilet brush in them. And uh, if you want to learn more about glaze um, chemistry and, and how to mix up your own glazes and that kind of thing, highly recommend you get John Britt's Master and Concept Glazes, <sighs> of course. Um, just like a two-year-old, you get on the phone <laughs> or you do a video. I was worried about doing a video in the house because there would be interruptions, mainly by Rinka. So hold, please. Okay, she's outside. <laughs> we'll see how long she lasts. It's snowing out there, so on snowy days, she tends to want to be outside more. She is like Christmas to her. So what was I talking about? Oh, Mastering Cone 6... Sick, Mastering Cone 6 glazes by John Britt. If you have any questions on glazes, check out that book. He's got a YouTube channel. Um, seriously, he's he's your go-to guy for glazes. He's my go-to guy for glazes. Anyway. Mm. Also, my mug of choice today, I needed the wolf. Um, I start shaking and get sweaty when I'm on my feet too long. And <clears throat> the 
the wolf is my spirit animal or spirit totem. So I will maybe link this fun test that you can take to find out what your spirit animal is. And one really cool thing about the wolf, um, um, biggest strengths um, are loyalty, independence, and family. Um, and sometimes your strengths can also be your weaknesses. Loyalty is also one of my biggest weaknesses because I'll stay loyal a little too long in the past when I shouldn't have. Anyway, so moving on from that, let's go ahead and what I've done is I've got about um, probably three and a half cups of glaze in here. Kind of gives me an idea of how much I've also watered it down more than what's in my bucket. Good, it takes more than that. So good, it's gonna take probably five cups. So remember the tree is hollow. So what I do, this is the reason I watered it down. Because it's gonna take, it's gonna sit in this bisque longer than I'd like. So if I watered it down, then I'm not gonna have any crawling or problems that way either. So, and yes, I'm glazing in my sink, but I'm very, very careful how much actually goes down the drain. And I have one of those things um, in your pipes that catches stuff. I don't know. Anyway, um, until I can get up a glazing situation in my garage, which will require insulated doors, um, this time of year, my studio is not quite big enough for all my glazing. So I'm going to go ahead and pour it into this one. I didn't water it down in this one because it's smaller. It's not going to stay in here as long. But do the same thing. I use my clear a lot as a liner glaze. Just wait till the drips kind of move it back and forth. So they're done on the inside. And um, <clears throat> now I'm going to clean up any glaze that has gotten onto the outside of them and then go to doing the next bit. So I'm going to move you over to the table because I'll have to, this is going to require hours. So we're going to be hit and miss during the day on how long I can sit and do it. And um, I do plan to put in some blue, royal blue velvet underglaze on the details on this one. And um, possibly, since we're doing lavender mist, I might do some royal purple on here and wipe it back. I still haven't decided, so um, we'll see. Very much the type that if you've been watching for a while, kind of go with the flow, things evolve as I go. All right, we'll see you in the next bit. Okay, before I start glazing, I'm going to put under glaze. I've decided to go ahead and put under glaze in the braid, the mom, and the tri triquatra. No, actually no, because we're glazing these, the holly green by Spectrum, and it does a, an amazing job of highlighting texture. It just gets in there and, and, and is darker. I probably have something here that I can show you, but you'll get to see it when it's done and so forth. So maybe you know what? I'm not going to. Because um, I know that, let's see, indecisions. Um, I know that the lavender mist on texture is going to break brown. So I think that's going to be enough. Yeah. So, no, none of that. But the Jess's Chung Blue sometimes doesn't show the texture as well as I'd like. So I think I'm just going to do the royal blue on Wendy's just to give it a little, or maybe I shouldn't. I'm just going to do it on the nuts. <laughs> Ugh, indecisions. So I've already, actually, yeah, this brush will work. Um, I always get my brushes wet before I um, do something like this. So I'm just gonna put it in the knot and just get it down in there. Just to give the Jess's Chung Blue a 
little help in helping to define that. I'm not going to do the braid though. So I'm just going to, I just want to get it into the recess of, especially since the knot here, the design is actually really small. It's a small impression and I want to give it as much chance to show up as possible. So let's see how that works. I got a thing of water here that I wash everything out in when I do stuff like this. I get my sponge wet. And I'm just gonna come in. Clean my sponge a lot when I do this, and I'll go over the area once, turn the sponge so it's got a clean spot, and go over it again. It is staining the bisque because the royal blue from Amethyst is a really strong one. It should be for how expensive it is. Um, but that'll be good enough for what I... Oh, crap. I did the wrong lid. Oh, man. Hmm. Well, let's take that out. This is the lid to the companion piece. So, if you do that... Just, I'm just going to wipe more of it away. Hmm. Does not bode well for how things are going to go today if I keep making mistakes. I tell you, when you um, hurt, your synapses in the brain don't fire the best. I am sure looking forward to it all being over with. All right, so this is the lid to Wendy's. That one will work out because I'm putting a purple on top of it. And of course, you know, purple and blue, they go together. I just might go ahead and just on the, on the knot, I might add the purple on that one. Hmm. Sometimes decisions are made for you, and it's going to sound kooky, but when I'm doing an urn, if I make a mistake, sometimes you got to think about why that mistake was making, made, not making, that's not even a word. Um, is there someone who's guiding your hand that maybe wants the mistake <laughs> or wants that choice? versus what you were going to decide. So I'm very much uh, one that is like, be open to the mistakes or the opportunities of doing something that you maybe hadn't planned on. So, so I'm going to go ahead and add purple. Which are my brushes. And if anything, the purple underglaze will mix with the blue and just make more of an intense purple. So I'm going to let that dry. And since we did that, I am not going to do this though. Nope. But you know what? I am going to do them all. Maybe that's what I was supposed to do. Is to highlight the mom. All right, so we're gonna do that. And then, a lot of times I don't even let it dry. It seems to come off easier and cleaner sometimes when you don't. So yeah, I like that. Okay, so obviously I was meant to do this. So we'll clean off the purple here. I'm not worried about the blue because it's very, very light. The glaze is going to cover that up, All right? Now we'll move you over to the table, but I think I'm going to take a break first. Okay, I've set up the camera or my tablet um, behind my left shoulder, and hopefully you can see what I'm doing the best there and I hope the lighting's okay um luckily we're overcast snowing yay snowing hey at least I'm down with surgeries and recovering in the worst month of 
of Utah, which is January. It's just, January is just a blah, blah month. Anyway, so holly green is what I'm going to use for the leaves. And I will do two coats on these leaves. Um, it's going to take a while, so um, I'll speed, up, speed you up for most of this and um, just uh, slow it down when I, anything noteworthy I have to say or any, any tips that I use um, that could be helpful. So I tend to, when I'm glazing like this, um, I will stir up my glaze. Always stir up your glaze. I mean, I, I did shake it, but sometimes that's not enough. You want all the good stuffs at the bottom, all the colorants usually. And this has a lot of um, copper carbonate in it. Um, and so there's a, it all sits at the bottom, even on the brushable. <laughs> all right. I tend to actually pour it into my lid instead of always reaching into the jar. Oh, sorry. Uh, Rinka's back. Emmy let her out. And we'll get back to this. Okay, she's back outside. Um, she tends to go in and out when I'm glazing too, for some reason. It's like, or demand treats. So you might hear a lot of her. I've got another little dog, a Cocker Spaniel Civic. And he's my best man. He's just a sweetie, and he's sleeping. <laughs> I try to keep my area clean, but I am not a clean glazer by any means. Um, these brushes are actually by um, Colors for Earth, and I like them because they hold a lot of glaze. So I'm just going to go in here and paint all the leaves. So we will speed you up. So, cause this is going to be a snooze fest otherwise. Um, when I said it's going to take hours, it might take more than hours in my current position or current situation. It might take a couple of days. So I'm very much one that I love to dip glazes. I just, I love the unpredictability of what's going to happen. <laughs> surprise, surprise. And so painting glazes sometimes takes out the surprise. It also, you know, they're more predictable, which a lot of people prefer, but I kind of like when you're not so much in control of it, when the kiln is more in control of what's going to happen, it opens you up to really cool things. Okay, so you get the idea. So I'm going to speed you up. Okay, took a break and um, while I was on my break, sat on the couch and taped off all the areas that I don't want to get glaze on. I will have to wax off the holly green. I hate to wax, absolutely hate it. Um, I always get it where I don't want it. <laughs> so this is one way that I'll take the time to tape things off so that I don't get, because I'm gonna glaze two coats of the holly green I'm still working on the holly green. Um, this has got two coats. I've got a lot of cleanup to do. Um, but now I'm going to focus on this one since I've still got the holly green out and uh, do that. And I <laughs> have grandkids downstairs. So you might hear some screaming. But I'm going to go ahead and speed you up for this too because I need to 
everything is kind of like watching paint dry. <laughs> the Spectrum Holly Green on here and I am going to actually I need to put my glasses on before I wax it I'm going to go in here and just kind of rub where there's little dots where the glaze isn't quite or an air bubble or whatever is in the texture you can see right there I do this on all my pieces I will rub them just a little bit just to make sure that they um <laughs> look at all the mess I've made but I still have to clean up and I even taped it off. I am I am a messy, messy glazer. So I need to move you down just a bit. It's actually dark here now. I had to stop glazing to let glaze dry, to rest with the knees and then um, it's Sunday, so people have been coming over. Um, this is Wax Resist. This is the brand that I like the best, um, mainly because I can see it. And something like this lasts me forever because I very, very rarely wax. And this is a brush that I've dedicated to waxing. I don't use it for anything else but waxing. So... I need to be careful just to make sure that I don't get wax anywhere I don't want it. Because if you get wax on a piece of this, sometimes you can sand it off. Um, ask me how I know that. Um, most of the time you have to this fire it again. So it's actually one of my least favorite things to use is wax. So I don't do it very often. I have tried the, um, it's not, it's, I think it's silicone. And my students, a lot of my students do like that over the wax. But something like this, I didn't want to take a chance of it pulling the glaze off. It gets quite sticky. Okay, so I'm just making sure that it's not going to drip anywhere because I look a little heavy handed. Then I'll let this dry really well and uh, then I'll take the tape off. I'll clean up where I got glaze on the piece, even over the tape. I still got glaze where I didn't want it, but that's Par for the course for me. That's just the way I do things. You can't see me right now, but I'm wearing a lot of glaze. <laughs> I just, I am just one with whatever medium I'm working with. If I'm painting a house or tiling or whatever, I'm wearing mortar or I'm wearing paint. It's just kind of how I roll. And if I try really careful, try to be super careful, it almost makes it worse. Okay, so now I'll go ahead and wax off the front of this. Because I plan to pour the glaze on the rest of this. This will be the easy one to... to um, glaze because this is basically the last step. At least on that uh, the big one, the big tree of life, I don't have to wax anything. Trying to be careful to go around. This is where the glazes will meet. Okay, good enough. And I put way too much wax out. I wish they made this with a wide mouth 
um, top so that you could just dip your brush in. And then just going around the edge. Okay. I will actually let that dry. In fact, I'll probably let it dry overnight. I don't know how much more glazing I'll get done um, today. And then I gotta figure out a way to get the wax back in the jar. Um, actually, one of the things I'm gonna do, and I'll probably do it off camera, I need to do a lot of cleanup on this where I got glaze where I didn't want it. So what I usually do on places that I have glaze that I don't want the glaze, I'll come in here with a needle tool and scrape it away. So I'll scrape it away where I don't want it. And then I'll come in with a brush of water. And I'll just do that. I don't know if you can see that. I'll do that one more time so you can see. It's kind of one of my little tricks. So I'll scrape away the glaze I don't want. And then with the watered down brush, I'll come in here and basically it doesn't get away doesn't get everything away but it gets enough of it away that the other glaze will cover it and not show this works great I know it works a lot on this um, 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 holly green by spectrum I can because I do this I do so many leaves in that color and figured out this method of cleaning up my mess <laughs> because I always make a mess no matter how careful I am I always make a mess so this will probably take me an hour or two to clean up all the places on the, um, I'm not, I don't really worry too much about some of this that's around the branches because that root beer will cover it up. Um, it's stronger than the holly green, but the Jess is Chung Blue, so I'll need to go in and do it all the, like in here, every place that the Jess is Chung Blue is going to be. I don't worry too much about the, um root beer because it's strong enough to cover so um this most likely will i will get you tomorrow <laughs> i'll spend the rest of the night clean it up and then i'll work on these again tomorrow we'll see you then hi guys it is tuesday <laughs> I, I did a little bit of glazing yesterday, but um, too much was going on yesterday to um, get a lot done. So I do go in tomorrow for um, getting cracked. So um, I'm going to try and get this finished today so that um, I plan to fire it probably um, Thursday. We got hit with a really big cold snap and it um, was um, below zero. <laughs> Feeling like I was in Alaska. It's absolutely gorgeous out there though. I'm looking at it right now and it is stunning. Let me see if I can turn you around to, it might be even too bright for you to see, but it is stunning outside. All right, so what I'm gonna do right now is I'm going to be doing, ah, sorry about the ride, bumpy ride. Adding the root beer, I decided to go ahead and do the root beer and I'm brushing this on uh, the way that when you work with uh, dippable or dipping, dipping and pouring glazes and when you're brushing them on, one really, really great thing about them is they technically only need one coat. I kind of do like a, a coat and a half. Um, it's a pretty heavy coat or the first coat and I just kind of dab it on, try to be as careful, especially with this one is... Because this one is uh, the darkest of the glazes and so it's going to show through everything. So I will spend time going over all the branches. But I only need to do, with it being a dip, dip and pour glaze instead of a brushable glaze, I only really need to do one coat. And this root beer is so nice 
because where it's thicker, it's glossy. Where it's thinner, it's more, it's darker and more matte. Well, that just adds to the effect of the tree. So by doing one coat of this glaze, I can get um, a whole bunch of different colors of this amber uh, root beer color, um, just variations of it. And it's super, super pretty when it's done. So love the result. But now I'll spend the time to very carefully um, do this. It took me all day to do that one yesterday. So that one's ready to go. And today I'm working on this and then I will be switching to the final coat. So I'll go ahead and put you on hyper speed for a little bit and um, get this going today. manipulation or the cracking of my knee on Wednesday so survived that it was not a good day Wednesday yesterday though was amazing um, but physical therapy was incredibly tough and um, then the nerve block wore off so uh, they did manipulate both knees I told them while I was under might as well give the other one a good bend too so um, I actually had hope yesterday that I might um, eventually see that this is working <laughs> today not so much so they took it easy on me with pt i've had to have pt um every day since the manipulation so we're getting there but i wanted to show you today we're finally at the point with the urn that um is my favorite uh because all of the really really fiddly stuff has been um glazed but this is um a really great tip that I use on my fairy houses because they're so labor intensive when it comes to glazing. And of course this piece is right in there, falls right in. So I showed you how I filled up these little bottles with glaze. I've already gone through and hit the places that I can't reach with a brush um, that are just too tight. Let me show you what I'm like. Let's see, I kind of got started here, we haven't done these like these little tiny areas between the leaves and where the branches are and so forth so what I'm gonna do is fill them in and I actually went I was having problems with this one if you'll notice that the tip on this one is really really tiny this one's a little wider this is for slip trailing it is <laughs> um, an XM tool. Um, everything is covered in clay. I swear, everything. So I filled it up with this one. Because this uh, Jess's Chung Blue is a thicker glaze, and it needs to be thicker. Otherwise, it's not going to throw the blue. It'll actually be kind of like um, really similar to Amico's uh, Glacier color, the or ice, where it's like a clear with the, just a tint of blue, but I want it blue. So what we're gonna do is I'm gonna go in, let's see if I can really show you how this works. I'm gonna lower you down just a touch so you're seeing that, less of me, more of the piece here. So I try not to touch the root beer, root beer, is one of those glazes so high in iron that it transfers it's really dusty and it'll transfer to my fingers and then i'll end up fingerprints of it places i don't want it so i keep shaking the glaze that i've sucked up into this and then i'm going to come in here i just want to show you how i do this and literally pour it into these gaps and underneath the leaves and so forth that I just can't reach. I'm not worried about it going up over like that part where it went up over the um, the root beer because the root beer 
it's going to when it melts it will cover all that up or um, it won't transfer to the root beer so I just go in and make sure that all these little spots have got glaze in them and uh, figuring this out with the little squeeze bottle I just felt so incredibly smart <laughs> you know when you do something and it's like oh I'm just brilliant so just get under there because you just cannot get your brushes in here and fill up those little areas and again this is a um, dipping glaze I only need to put one coat in here with this and that'll be enough I'm not gonna have to go in see like these little tiny little areas just give them a little squirt just squirting all the glaze so I'll go through make sure I don't miss any and I will go through the all the way way around the leaves and get in there to make sure that they're all covered So, just a little fiddly, so I will speed you up for most of this. And we'll get it done. Also, places like this where I've gotten glaze where I don't want it, um, I'm just going to brush it off. The nice thing about this Jess's Chung Blue and the Holly Green is that since they're blues and greens, they, they melt really well together. This is a really good combination. filled in and around in here um, I'm gonna go through using this same squeeze bottle to get in between my roots I have to be a little bit more careful here and I just want to I found that this is much easier to do this way than try to bring a brush and do it I will have a lot more cleanup still to get to do and I'll go and do a once over, I'll hit the leaves and everything with the um, holly green just on the edges just one more time and, and like places here where it's brushed I will, it's gotten where I don't want it. I will brush that off. Need to clean. This is where the um, I touched the root beer with my hands and transferred it. That's how that gets there. You have to be really careful with this root beer. It's actually one of the reasons why I like it to be the last glaze I do, but it wasn't working out very well. And then the bottom and the top, I actually will just dip them. I'll get it to where I can dip it. I will end up with a, um, see like that, I'm gonna have to scrape off that little mess, <laughs> a little spit. So there is some of this, but with this, I know my glaze is so well that, and you do that when you work with them you start really realizing how they work and the different ones. It's all trial and error. That's what pottery is, is trial and error. Now this won't be a very smooth in the sense that um, you're going to see parts of this blue are going to be darker and lighter. That's just the nature of it and I actually really like that. Kind of gives it a to me, a fairy-like quality. 
you know, kind of like dabbled, dappled them um, sunshine or something through the leaves, I'll end up with somewhat of a, a dappled look. So just going over these roots now. We're almost there. Just probably another three, four hours. <laughs> when I do get these drips like this, I don't want drips. Probably should be lying this down. But it's hard for you guys to see if I do that. And if you'll notice, I'm putting the glaze in here. I'm not going into the glaze. I'm pushing. I'm letting it flow. I'm not like like I'm doing that. I'm not doing that because that's going to clog my top if I do it that way. So I'm pushing the glaze in and kind of pulling it out so I don't clog that tip. And every now and then I have to shake my bottle. But those of you who have struggled to glaze really finicky pieces, especially when you put all the time into all these detail, this is a good tip on how to get in there because it's really tough to get in there with a brush and get it covered. So these larger areas, I will, like these areas and so forth, I will end up brushing those, but I'm just kind of doing my outline right now. If you think of it that way, like drawing my outline here. I'll also come in when it's all dry because this is really lumpy so I will try to smooth out a lot of these areas kind of even them out just a touch because sometimes that helps with getting it to be more more smooth Probably not what I wanted to do right there. Okay. Make sure I didn't miss any areas. Yeah, a lot of cleanup. <laughs> That's kind of pretty much how I do. I spend a lot of time going over something like this, though. I mean, you have to. I mean, it's not a quick one and done. I guess you could glaze the whole thing and just dip it in one color, but it's not going to be as dramatic of a piece. You can always tell when I'm getting down to the bottom of my squeeze bottle because it doesn't kind of starts to spit at me.
<laughs> let gravity work for you instead of against you here. Actually, back to work. Trying It looks really messy, <laughs> and it is really messy, but I have faith that it's going to turn out really pretty. It is kind of tricky because this thing isn't very light. I mean, it's top heavy and uh, I really should have this on a sponge, but it's out in my studio and my PT ordered me not to go into my studio because I would be tempted to do stuff. And he is right, but I still should have it. And when I start brushing, I just might go get it. But I'm almost done, so I'm just pushing through. This would also work if you were doing brushable glazes. But again, you're going to get a lot of glaze on the piece when you squeeze it in. So... You kind of have to test with each each glaze so you know what it's going to do. It's starting to clog up on me. So if it clogs up, you just reach in there and give it a... Take a pin tool or... No, oh, that's not... Quit doing that. All right. I'm going to have to do it this direction, so... Yeah, it's starting to spit too much, so I need to add some more glaze, but I'm almost there. It's making me sweat. <laughs> Good idea to have a wet sponge or a rag because the glaze wants to dry at the end of that squeeze bottle too. All right. Clean up your drops so they don't get places you don't want them. 
So let me show you some of my cleanup. I'll show you how I'm going to do that. But like where I've got these dots, I literally can just take my finger, rub them off of the leaves. It'll either blend it into the glaze. Some of these might have to, I might have to bring the root beer back over where I'm touching. But also, um, the root beer will show up underneath this glaze, but it'll give you, or at least it has in the past, kind of gives you the idea that the roots are, you know, that three-dimensional, you know, they're, they're tucked back behind each other. Kind of does that kind of thing. Well, at least it has in the past, and I'm hoping that's what it's going to do here. But some of these places, especially here, like I've almost rubbed the root beer off. So I will have to come in and just touch up a little bit with the root beer and so forth. But now I'm ready to, down here, I can actually dip this whole bottom. And I can dip the top probably to here and then I'll have to fill in. And then I'll have to fill in with the brush here. And then we're almost there. And it can go in the kiln today. Okay, I'm ready to brush on my dippable glaze. So I've got the dippable glaze in this. So I have to stir it quite often. I am using these Color for Earth Sumi brushes and they hold a lot. And I'm gonna just come in here and I'm dabbing. It will help make that transition between me squeezing it on and uh, brushing it. So I'm just going to dab, and I'll only do one coat, and it dries really fast, dippable glazes dry really fast on disc. You can see it drying, it's, it's, so they don't brush well, so my advice is to just blot the glaze on there with the brush. Constantly going back and forth. Oops, I think I missed, did I miss? I think I did. So, have your squeeze bottle there in case there's a couple of spots that you didn't get covered and then you can hit them. There we go. And then I'll just come in and dab glaze on this. Thank you, Dad. Huh. Couple of places I didn't get. Actually, we're just going to brush that on there. Try to anyway. Right next to this root didn't. Another one I didn't get. A messy, messy job. There it is. Okay. 
And before I call it good, I will definitely double check every little bit of this just to make sure that it all got glazed. That I didn't miss. I didn't miss anything. Okay, pottery peeps, we are finally here. The cleanup's been done, touch-up's been done. It took a lot longer to do than, of course, I always think it's going to, but I've got my Jess's Chun Blue ready to go, and I just need to dip it. And I need to do the bottom, and I need to do the top, so Trying to figure out which is the best way to go. I think I'm going to do this. And I'm just going to pour. See why I like pouring and dipping so much better than painting. And then I'm going to do the top, dip the top in really good. Okay, so, all right, now, see what I mean about the powder? Powder gets all over your hands, so, all right, so now we're going to do the bottom. And, almost need to be really flexible here. Okay, so I let that dry and then clean it up and uh, get it in the kiln. I do have the lid still to do and I am just going to dip it. And then let it dry. <laughs> and I do need to get a couple of spots here because of the design that's on the top. Sometimes you get little air bubbles. If you hit them with your finger, that usually takes care of it. Okay. Now I'm going to get the other glaze ready. Okay, this one is going to be done with the uh, lavender mist. Uh, her daughter's favorite colors are purple. So we did the lavender mist and the, the holly green to tie it in with the tree of life. I did decide at the last minute to add um, the amethyst uh, velvet under glaze and wipe it back in the design. For some reason, I don't know, just did. <laughs> so this one has been waxed off. So... I want to make sure that I'm getting it really well around where those leaves come in and then also here. And then double check that I haven't missed any. that top too. So I do need to take a sponge and just wipe off where I waxed and it comes right off. That's one good thing about the wax. It probably will let it dry a little bit more on the leaves. And if you put your finger in, and I will clean that up, actually. Sometimes I do 
this just to put some glaze on there just to make sure I didn't miss anything. And now the lid and we're done. All right. So these are going to dry. Um, you definitely want your pieces, the glaze to be dry before you put them in the kiln. So they'll dry, but they are going in tonight. And I was hoping in this video that I could show you the result, but that didn't happen. Just too much time with these dang knees. And so like and subscribe, hit the bell so that you don't miss it. And I will put up a video on Monday. Today is Saturday, February 5th or Saturday in February. And I will do a kiln unloading and we'll see this. It, it will get another firing because we're going to do the phases of the moon in gold. So it's going to get a gold luster firing too. But um, I will do Monday's video so you can see the result. So I can see the result. And at this point, there isn't anything we can do but pray to the kiln gods that everything works out for Wendy. And this just turns out just as beautiful as what we envisioned. That's the crazy thing about pottery is you do all this work and then you turn it over to, I'm going to actually do this at a cone six. So what, 22, 32 is the temperature it's going to hit. And I'll do a 10 minute hold and you're kissing it goodbye. It's not yours anymore. It's the kilns. And so whatever happens in the kilns happens. <laughs> so wish me luck and we will see you on Monday. Thank you.